Hello grade 9 science class. Welcome back to another lecture. This is lesson 9, subatomic particles. We're getting up there in the chemistry unit. Uh, I believe after this there's four more to go. I got 13 or 14 lessons in this unit. So this one is titled subatomic particles. So something that we talked about quite a bit last time we are going to get into in more detail. We're also going to talk about what we can get information wise from the periodic table while looking at it. There is uh, lots of different atoms, lots of different elements on it, uh, but what can we get from the information that it gives us? That's what we're going to talk about today. So let's refresh first. First we have subatomic particles. So protons, as you remember, are positive. P, P, protons positive in the nucleus. That's where they reside and they have a mass of one. Uh, protons weigh something. If you remember from our chart from the previous lesson, protons are positive, they reside in the nucleus, and they have a mass of one. Neutrons have no charge, they're neutral. They are also in the nucleus, and they also have a mass of one. Electrons are negative, they were E negative in their symbol, and they reside outside the nucleus. Uh, they float around in orbit, essentially, in specific orbits and specific energy levels and they do not have a mass. They do not weigh anything. Um, what exactly they are we don't know but uh, they don't, they're, they're not made of anything. They have no mass. So that's a review of the different subatomic particles. Protons, neutrons, and electrons. What we can get, uh, we can actually get all that information from uh, what is in one square or one symbol, one element on the periodic table. So the periodic table is a chart that organizes all the known elements according to their physical and chemical properties. I've given you a copy of that in your booklet. You've seen it before. We've talked about it a little bit. Um, now, most versions of the periodic table in each box include the element name. This one doesn't, but it's hydrogen. It includes the symbol. This is H. It includes the atomic number. That's number one. And then the atomic mass, that is what's below, 1.01. .01. So it's going to look a little bit different on your periodic tables, but that's usually what's included uh, in each box on a periodic table. So it's probably going to look something like this. Atomic number up top, number one, element symbol, H, element name, hydrogen, and atomic weight or atomic mass goes below. You can see that that is number uh, two and number three in terms of key points, atomic number and atomic weight or atomic mass. So what can we get from that? We already know about the symbol and the element name. What can we get from these two numbers? So the atomic number equals the number of protons in the nucleus in each atom. So the atomic number equals the number of protons. That's what we need to know. That's what we should highlight. The atomic number equals the number of protons in the nucleus. Uh, it also equals the mass of the protons because each proton uh, equals one. So that would be if there's eight protons, the mass of the protons would be eight. And then it also equals the number of electrons in each atom of an element. So the atomic number, the one at the top, gives us a lot of information. It tells us the number of protons and it tells us the number of electrons. So if we have this symbol right here, we can take it and we can, if the question was how many protons and how many electrons are there uh, in oxygen, we would find this one on our periodic table. We would see oxygen with its symbol O. We would see the atomic number is eight. That's the top one. So the protons would equal eight. Remember that's P positive. And the electrons equal eight as well. That's E negative. So the atomic number is eight. So therefore we have eight protons and we have eight electrons. Uh, it is always like that. So whenever you're on a periodic table, if I say um, lithium, you're going to find lithium. It's atomic number three. Lithium has three protons and it has three electrons. Uh, we are going to now talk about atomic mass. What can we get from the atomic mass, the bottom number? Atomic mass is the average mass of all the atoms in an element, and we write it as a decimal. Uh, 
but we're going to talk about it in terms of a whole number. We are going to round it always to the closest whole number. So if the atomic mass is given on your periodic table is 22.3, you're going to round that to 22. And what we do with the atomic mass is we take the atomic mass, uh, the atomic mass is the total number of protons and the neutrons because the only uh, subatomic particles that have mass are protons and neutrons. Electrons don't have it. Therefore, we could take the we could find the number of neutrons in any element by taking the atomic mass and subtracting the atomic number, taking the bottom number and subtracting the top number essentially. So let's do an example. We have nitrogen given above. Bumped it a little bit. There we go. So we have nitrogen given above. And we are going to uh, find out how many neutrons, protons, and electrons in it. Now I see the atomic number is 7. So I have atomic number equals 7. So that means that protons are equal to 7 and electrons are also equal to 7. Right? If the atomic number is 7, protons and electrons also equal 7. Now we need to find out what the number of neutrons are. That's a question mark, not a 7. Okay. So to do that, we take the atomic mass. The atomic mass is 14. And we subtract the atomic number, which is 7. 14 minus 7 equals 7. Therefore, the number of neutrons we have is 7. So we can do that with any uh, different uh, element that we see on the periodic table. If we see the atomic number and the atomic mass, we can find out how many protons, how many electrons, and how many neutrons it has. And it's not always the same. It definitely fluctuates. Uh, we have a bunch of examples that we can do above. So let's do them together. We have the first one given. So neon has atomic number 10 and an atomic mass of 22. So it has protons and electrons as 10 because that's the atomic number. 22 subtract 10 is 12. So that's 12 neutrons. So we're going to write this as neon 22 because it's a mass number is 22. That's just a notation for it, something we call the isotope. So we have calcium next. Uh, calcium has the atomic number 20, so that means it's protons and electrons are going to equal 20. Calcium has atomic number 20, that's how many protons and electrons it has. It has a mass number of 46, so for neutrons, we're going to take the number 46, subtract 20, to get 26 neutrons. So that would go in the column second from the right. We would then be able to write this as the isotope calcium dash 46, because that's the weight that we used. So calcium 46 has 20 protons and 20 electrons and 26 neutrons. We can do that for oxygen as well. So this is going to be a little bit different than we had before. The protons and electrons are equal to 8 because it has an atomic number 8. We are going to use the mass number of 17 and subtract the atomic number 8 to get the number of neutrons. 17 minus 8 is 9. So that's 9 neutrons. So we would be able to write this as our last column in the isotope. We would be able to go oxygen 17. We take the mass number and we put it behind. So we would represent um, oxygen 17 has 9 neutrons, 8 protons, and 8 electrons. I would suggest you pause the video and try the next two on your own, and then unpause it, and I'll go over the next two kind of quickly. Okay, let's do iron. So iron has 26 protons and electrons. And I know that because its atomic number is 26. Its mass number is 57. So I'm going to take the number 57 and subtract 26. Uh, let's see. 
that would get me uh, I'm having trouble so that would be 51 and then I subtract 20 from that so 31 so that would be 31 neutrons so this iron atom has 31 neutrons 26 protons and 26 electrons and we would write it as isotope iron 57. We write its mass number behind it, its mass number. We would then have zinc. So the protons and electrons for zinc are given as 30 because that's its atomic number. We would then take uh, the 64, which is its mass number. So 64 subtract 30 to get 34 neutrons. That was much easier math for me. And we'd be able to write this as zinc 64. Zinc with its mass number behind it. Uh, there's a bunch of problems for you guys to do. You can see your job there is uh, the atomic mass and number worksheet. So go ahead and give those a try. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks very much for watching, everyone. I appreciate it, and I'll see you in class.